On the eighth day, I came to the conclusion that the bloody music touring business was too hard. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's just a difficult business, and uh, it looks easy from up here, but... Uh, Well, that's what I figured, you know. I needed a bit of time on Easy Street, so I took a job doing diplomacy in Afghanistan. <laughs> um, actually, the story of how I came to be in Afghanistan is a bit more complex than that. Uh, after 9-11, of course, Western countries went in to Afghanistan, well, mainly the Americans, but we went in support and kicked the Taliban out pretty quickly, drove them into the mountains of West Pakistan, and uh, sort of declared victory and then got a bit preoccupied in Iraq for four, five, six years. And then we, uh, we looked up in 2005, 2006 and realised that things were going very badly in Afghanistan. And so the international community was called on to send troops there in larger numbers. And in that, <coughs> in that context, the Dutch, as good NATO members, stuck their hands up and said, OK, we'll send men to Uruzgan. Uruzgan province, we'll take it. And so the Dutchies sent 2,000 men to Uruzgan province, and we said to the Americans, well, what do you want us to do? And the Americans said, go and help the Dutch in Uruzgan province. And so we sent about 300 blokes there um, at the time, and now we've got about 1,200 guys there, mainly focused on mentoring the 4th Brigade of the Ash Afghan National Army. Um, fast forward a few years, 2009 and we got an inkling that the Dutch might be shaping up to leave because they were looking a bit queasy about it all and um, in any case we decided the place was pretty bloody complex and there was a need for political advisors and so they sent in me <laughs> and I rocked up there as a musician I don't just go places, I rock up <laughs> look at me got a shirt like this I rocked up there in uh, July 2009 um, very quickly discovered three things about the place. The first was it's dusty. It's just this fine dust everywhere. Uh, the second thing I discovered was having attended the RSO and I course, the reception staging and knowledge integration course, and being driven by the ADF onto the MNBTK, the multinational based Tarrant Cut. I quickly came to the conclusion that the MEO, the Middle Eastern Area of Operations, had turned into an ARE, an acronym rich environment. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, there were TLAs coming out of people's ARSEs. <laughs> chocker. You had a bunch of blokes there from 1RAR, the Royal Australian Regiment, all working within the MRTF, the Mentoring and Reconstruction Task Force all observing SOPs, standard operating procedures, TTPs, tactics, training and procedures, living on FOBs, forward operating bases, COPs, combat outposts, avoiding where possible AP mines, anti-personnel mines, IEDs, improvised explosive devices. Then within the IED category you had SIEDs, suicide IEDs, PPIEDs, pressure plate initiated IEDs, VBIEDs, vehicle borne IEDs, DBIEDs, donkey-born IED. <laughs> Seriously, the Taliban are very innovative in the use of these bombs, including sort of daisy chain arrangements where one will be linked by another, to another one by detonation cord to sort of maximise the effect. It's a nasty business. And that was the third thing I discovered, this combination of the dust and the IEDs was deadly. On my first day there, I attended a memorial service for a young bloke called Ben Renato uh, <coughs> from Springvale in Victoria. And that... Um, you know, it was the first one I'd attended. It, got me, it really kind of got to me. And uh, uh, As I got working there in the uh, MRTF headquarters, I, I got to know a few of the guys in the two-shop, which is what they call the intelligence cell, the two-shop. <coughs> um, and uh, anyway, I eventually read... Uh, and got, so I developed an understanding of what happened to Ben, and I eventually read the uh, Commission of Inquiry report into his death. Um, and that got me imagining a conversation between the colonel, whose job it was to investigate the report, and uh, oh. one of Ben's mates, a young bloke called Paul. And I wrote this next song from Paul's point of view. It's called The Dust of Uruzgan. <laughs> The 
ring they call me warlord, my mother call me Paul. You can call me Private Warren when you're filing your report. As to how I came to be here, this is what I understand. In this hospital in Germany from the dust of Earth's band. Well, I had just turned 28 and just bought a new car when I joined the 1st Battalion of the Big One RAR. We were next up for deployment into South Afghanistan to combat the insurgents in the dust of Uruzgan. Well, it took seven months training just to get into the joint. There were push-ups and procedures and there was death by a PowerPoint. And then the RSO and I course and Ali Al Salam but nothing can prepare you for the dust of Uruzgan. Me and Benny sat together, flying into Kandahar. We sucked back on our near beers in the Camp Baker bar. And we were up at 0530 and on the Hurkin out. In 20 flying minutes and we were into town Cow. How we shook hands as the boys ripped out from MRTF1. Pretty soon we're out patrolling in the Afghan summer sun. Walking through the green zones with a star in my hand Body armor chafing through the dust of her hand. Well we started up near Chora working 14 hours a day Mentoring a Kandak from the Afghan 4th Brigade down to the Baluchi, to East Dorishan Working under open skies in the dust of Uruzgan Well it's a long, long way from Townsville Not like any place you see Suddenly you're walking through the 14th century Women under burkas and tribal warlords rule the land Full of goats and muck and jingle trucks is the dust of Uruzgan And the education minister can neither read nor write And the minister for women Runs a knock shop there at night. They've been fighting there forever over water, food, and land. Murdering each other in the dust of earth. Yeah, there's nothing about the province that's remotely fair or just. But worse than the corruption is the endless fucking dust. Find this talcum powder on the ground and in the air. And it gets into your eyes. And it gets into your hair. And it gets into your weapon, and it gets into your boots And when the bureaucrats all show up there, it gets into their suits And it gets in the machinery, and foils every plan There's something quite symbolic about the dust of earth Still the people can be gracious, and they're courteous and smart And when the children look into your eyes, they walk into your heart Face each day with courage and each year without a plan Beyond scratching for survival in the dust of Uruzgan But the Taliban are ruthless, they keep the people terrorised With roadside bombs and hangings and leaving letters in the night And they have no useful vision for the children of this land But to keep them praying on their knees in the dust of Uruzgan Saturday morning when the two shop made a call on a compound of interest to the east of Cotton Shore. We had some information that they were building IEDs and so we cordoned and we searched it in accord with SOPs. I was on the west flank picket, propped there with Ben, there to keep a watchful eye out while the other blokes went in. And we knew the signs of danger from the TTPs we'd learned. But the Nationals were moving back and forth without concern. I've been standing still for hours when I took a quick step back. Kicked a small AP mine and everything went black. I woke up on the gurney, flat out on my back. I had to ask them seven times just to get the facts. But I lived to tell this story 
after a simple twist of fate. The main charge lay ten feet away from the pressure plate. You see the mine was linked by debt cord to a big charge laid by hand. Hidden under Benny by the dust of her skin. I was a Queensland champ tie boxer. Now I look south of my knee. And all I see is bed sheets where my right foot used to be. Benny's dead and buried underneath Australian sand But his spirit's out there wandering through the dust Through the dust of Ura's game Treasure in the dust. Dust the birds.